welcome back to CNN in Time. Here's a quote. Even though my individuality finds sweet knowing perfection, I listen to answers to wishes from above. The words of Longfellow, maybe Emerson, no, they're said to be the musings of a then six-year-old Marshall Ball. And whether you see Marshall Ball as some kind of prodigy or just the product of wishful thinking, there is no denying that he is an American literary phenomenon. More now from Kathy Slavogan. The wind changes direction. There is lovely music that feels soft. Marshall is there thinking lornfully gorgeous thoughts. Fans crowd readings of his poetry. Listening marvelously juxtaposed in wonderment, finding solitude near. Marshall, I wonder you know how much you inspired me. He's in demand for book signings. Okay, there's a little line back there. Just gotta keep going. Sure, enjoy your work, Marshall, thank you. Thank you. He's appeared on Oprah. Oh my goodness, Marshall, there's still lots of people. We'll take a little break. But this best-selling author from Austin, Texas, is a 13-year-old who cannot walk, talk, or feed himself. Push, Marshall. Push. Marshall Push. Ball has been severely disabled Push. since birth, Push. attended by Holy therapists God. and tutors. Good. His life is a daily struggle against his body. Lean over your legs. Stand up. Push. Push. Good. Troy and Charlie Ball began to notice something was wrong with their son when he was an infant. Marshall couldn't sit up or hold his head straight like other babies. It was very hard for us. Um, I, I remember it was hard to be places where there were other children and other families because you, you couldn't help but look at someone else's baby and, and, and think, you know, why isn't my child able to, to sit up yet on my lap? The balls took Marshall to half a dozen doctors. No one could come up with a diagnosis. Could the doctors tell you what was wrong? No, no. We um, eventually took Marshall to several neurologists and geneticists, and they, they started running tests on Marshall, and uh, they were unable to come up with a diagnosis at all. First it was cerebral palsy, muscular dystrophy, epilepsy, autism all of which have been proven to be incorrect uh, medically. What Marshall has is probably a rare, rare disorder. With that kind of hopelessness for a diagnosis, at some point you don't give up looking, but you begin living. Oh, oh, all right. Doctors told the balls that Marshall would probably be severely mentally retarded and might not live past the age of 10. But the balls say they refuse to accept that. If anything, it just, it, it energized us to prove that wrong because you know, here was a dire prediction made about our child uh, that we didn't want to accept in any way. Troy Ball constantly read and talked to Marshall, hoping he understood. Two years after Marshall's birth, Troy Ball had a second son, Colton. Like Marshall, he too had a mysterious disability without a diagnosis. One more step. Determined to break through, she refused to give up on either child. But Colton was restless and showed no interest in being read to. There you go. Marshall would sit in her lap for hours. One day, while she was showing him a toy, there was a sudden breakthrough. At the age of three and a half, Marshall, for the first time in his life, communicated with us. So I said, Marshall, can you show me where the dog is, the dog button? And he just leaned like this, sideways, you know, until he got right above the dog button, and, and he pushed that. You have to understand, it was the greatest thing in the world. It was like, you know, he got up and ran across the room. Because, um, you know, for three and a half years, we had been holding him, carrying him, reading to him, talking to him, taking him places, explaining things to him. Yet he had never reached out and touched a toy with his hand. So you knew that for all those years, he had been listening? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we got the M. Once they realized Marshall was listening, the balls began showing him numbers, letters, and brought in a special therapist to help him recognize words. What's the next letter? They wanted to know just how intelligent he was, so they took him to Dr. Keith Turner, a special education professor at the University of Texas. Even though I have a PhD, I felt like I was a total novice in understanding Marshall. Dr. Turner figured out a way to test Marshall at the age of five. 
He held up math and reading questions. Since he couldn't use his hands, Marshall pointed out the answers with his head. Yeah. What did you find? I found out that he performed consistently both in math and at reading at the third grade level. And he was five years old? Five years old at that time. Turner says Marshall was not mentally retarded. In fact, he was gifted. Okay, I'm starting now. Yeah. <laughs> you know the fast one. You what kind of math could he do? Oh, he could do like uh, two plays, sedations like 25 plus uh, 39. In his head? In his head. Two other specialists confirmed Marshall was a gifted child. His mother was shocked. He was very advanced because he had been listening, because he had been, you know, shown books and pages for years and years and had us read to him, and he just was taking it all in. Marshall was enrolled in a public school where he was given advanced material and where he communicated with his teachers through pointing his head. But Troy Ball wanted to expand his vocabulary to let him choose his own words. She made him an alphabet board, and at the age of five, Marshall began to write. Held upright in the lap of an adult, who also held his elbow to stabilize his arm, Marshall tapped out words on his board. His mother says that within six months, Marshall's writing evolved from single word answers to lyrical sentences. Jagged daisies. One day I looked clearly, seeing brightly colored jagged daisies geometrically looking out from their individual clusters. His parents say they were amazed at his use of words. He even used some words they had to look up in the dictionary. B-R-O-U-G-H, bruh of God. I said, I don't know that word. I look it up, it's not in the regular dictionary. I go get an unabridged dictionary. B-R-O-U-G-H is an old Scottish dialect word that means the halo. Marshall, I know you love to read. Who are some of your favorite authors? Let's see. You ready? It takes Marshall about 10 minutes to answer one question. T H O R E. You. Thoreau. Thoreau. You love Thoreau. Two years ago, Marshall's mother selected some of his writings and self-published them in a book called Kiss of God. It was intended as a Father's Day gift. Friends and family, we get copies too, as you would expect, and their friends wanted it, and it, it, it began to grow with a life of its own, and Marshall was the one that messaged us that he was ready for his work to be published. Marshall's parents say he told them he wanted to reach as many people as possible. Last spring, the Balls hired a publicist and found a distributor for the book. Word spread about the child poet who couldn't speak. Marshall appeared on Oprah, and book sales took off. More than 150,000 copies so far. When Marshall writes his poetry, it is his parents or his grandmother who hold him, balancing his elbow in their hand. Though this may raise doubts as to whether Marshall himself is choosing the words, Dr. Turner is convinced he is. I have no doubt that it's Marshall writing the poetry. His patterns, his style are truly unique to Marshall. What makes you so sure that Marshall himself is choosing these words, writing this poetry? I just didn't do a hour or two assessment. I probably have over 200 hours when I was working with him to watch, and my job is to be what we call empirical, data-based, because I want to make sure that when people watch the procedures that they can be replicated, that there will be no doubt. Left foot, right here. The tone of Marshall's poetry is spiritual Ready? and almost always positive, despite the hardships of his life. One step for me, one step, you can do it. And how about if two lines are... Thank He's been hospitalized several times and nearly died recently of pneumonia. Because of the risk of infection, his parents had to take him out of school. He's now taught at home. Minus F of X. The balls say there are times when Marshall's isolation seeps into his poetry. And no one came. January feels the same. Then winter left. Then the same. Thoughts are near of you, giving me a time to love. Days are long 
and no one came. Can you, make it, you help us like But for the most part, his parents say it is remarkable how patient Marshall is and how little he complains. And that he's not bitter about the freedom other children have. In fact, he delights in the antics of his adopted brother, six-year-old Luke. He enjoys, I think, the commotion and the whirlwind that is Luke. Hi. Marshall lives at times sort of vicariously through Luke. He has written poetry about Luke. Upsie daisies. Even a Marshall dreams of climbing a tree. See that good tree as a piece of me. Fortunately, I have fine, lovely Luke growing free, dearly waiting for me to climb that tree. If you could have one wish come true, what would you wish? Marshall's wish? That all good loving children find perfect peace. <laughs> Marshall Ball will be in Los Angeles this Wednesday. He's opening the 10th Annual Noel Foundation Awards for Women. Marshall has written a poem especially for the event that will honor the likes of civil rights icon Rosa Parks and former UNICEF spokesperson, actress Audrey Hepburn. Marshall's mother will deliver his poem. We'll be back in a moment. 